dear friends, dear colleagues, welcome to the Weldman concert. And this is the Weldman unit. Weldman is about welding, titanium, meaning abutment, wire, directly into the mouth and create it immediately, in a matter of second or minutes, a stable, robust, passive, durable framework, on the top of which you can rely any kind of prosthetic shell and make temporary or even final restoration. The first concern that normally is raised is, well, do I deliver too much heating to my patient? Can I somehow jeopardize the peri-implant tissue? How is possible to weld titanium reaching temperature of more than 1600 degrees directly into the mouth without any risk. Well, this is exactly the case and it is exactly what it happens. We have, of course, demonstrated this in thousands of clinical proced procedures published in a number of papers. And specifically, we have one paper that addressed this issue. And in this paper, what you can see is, is that no matter how many mistakes you can introduce in a technique, the worst thermal increase that you can achieve is 34.5 Celsius degree. And if you simultaneously would please pour, spray some cold water during the welding procedure, well, then the temperature will drop down to 20 Celsius degrees. So, there is no risk at all of an burning or whatever you may think about. How is the quality of the welding job? Well, the quality is quite excellent. By using this machine, you can achieve a perfect union between the two pieces of titanium. As you can see here in this, uh, welding joint, there is absolutely no defect, no interface in this. And the granules of titanium are embedded into each other without any uh, space, empty space. What about the resistance of the welding joint to fatigue and to load? Well, the resistance is quite excellent and this has also been tested in a number of this. So we achieve an impressive amount of resistance of our uh, welding joint. Also from a tensile point of, of view, this resistance has been tested, as you can see in this slide here. 20 samples tested one after the other, and you see how they behave exactly in the same way, and they all, all give up at more than 2,000 of Newton centimeters. With the standard deviation less than 5%. So it's amazing how strong is this welding joint and permanent. What about the passivity of this kind of restoration? Well, let me tell you that among the screw retained restoration that you can develop with any kind of procedure. These restoration are the more passive restoration that you will ever see in your life. Because those restorations are made directly into the mouth. Well, what is, after all, welding about? Well, the principle of the Weldman concept is the resistance 
welding. And the distance welding has been around for a number of years, I would say centuries, because it's been developed in 1885 and is widely spread in the industry nowadays. So we have just, we, what we did, we just pick up this formula and work on changing the different parameters in order to get the best result in the shorter time. So we develop a, spe a specifically designed software that is capable to do the welding in a fraction of a second. That's why we have no heating and no problem whatsoever. This is the welding unit. And you did also specifically design a dedicated component and those are the abutment. So and what you see here is a button for screw retain restoration at implant level, abutment for abutment level restoration screw retain it, or an abutment for telescopic with chronometric retention restoration. Also the wire has been specifically designed for that. And we combine the different granulometry in order to achieve the best performance. And also, last but not least, we develop a number of instruments to perform the best bending without the least number of defects. So we don't want to introduce any tension and any problems. So that's why we uh, have designed those instruments. As you can see here, we have an instrument to make sharp angles, one to grip the, the bar without uh, leaving any defects, another one to make wide angle, and the last one to cut it. Well, this is more or less the old procedure, the old concept. So you can see now a very short summary. And in the summary that you see here, we just pick up the clamp, the welding clamp. The wire is being bended, is now approximated to the abutment. You just now put the clamp each side of the two pieces of titanium that you want to weld, release the clamp so that the pressure is going all against the two pieces, push your switch pedal and let the current flow through and create a permanent framework in a matter of seconds. <coughs> then, when you have this framework, now for the mouth, you can still work on that. You can and you should add the retention for the teeth. Should you have any cantilever part or interimplant span that you want to increase in thickness, you can add more bar or more wire. It's a kind of handcraft work. And we think that in the industry there is still a big need of handcrafting. And the result of this is this framework. Now look at this framework. And this framework is uh, one of the best kind of framework that you can achieve by welding titanium. There is no technique that is able to do a, a framework as good as this. Passive, robust, quickly made and very much inexpensive. So let me now show you very quickly the kind of prosthetic solution that you can do with this approach. And those solution has been developed on dense fly implant, where all the study has been performed in these years. So on the Xive implant, is an implant with a butt joint connection and an internal next. You see we have designed abutment, specifically designed abutment for implant 
level security and restoration. <coughs> so, a case like you see here, for implant has been placed, immediately placed. Now the, the carrier are replaced with the welding abutment. The wire is shaped and very quickly welded <coughs> into the mouth. The framework now is removed. Retention for the teeth are added. Now the framework is sandblasted, opaqued, replaced into the mouth for another check. And then you have your shell that is relined on the top of this with some kind of composite or acrylic whatever you think you may like more. So you see now the whole thing is relined. After the acrylic is set, you remove the whole thing. And now it's about time to finish this. Trim, polish, and put it back into the mouth. You now put some screw and tighten it. And this is the way you can, the, your patient can leave the office very quickly after the surgery and with an, a very, very <coughs> rewarding restoration. Same things can be done on the ankylos. The ankylos is an implant with a more safe connection. And we have designed an abutment specifically to, do, to make an implant level restoration on this implant where the screw can be removed different gingival height one platform one prosthetic platform this is always the ankylos design so in a case where you have just removed four incisors in the mandible you put the implant you replace the carrier with those abutments. See how bulky and strong they are. And now you pick up a wire. You weld the wire to the abutment. Again, you then remove it, opaque it, put it back. Tie the screw in order to have the old framework engaging the implant, then Remove the screw, reline on the top of this, finish, polish, trim, and again is ready to be screw retained directly into the mouth. Can we work at the bottom level? We sure can. Back to the side implant. And on the side implant, to work abutment level, we are using the MP abutment. Straight, angle, makes no difference. The platform is the same. We have cylinders designed specifically to be welded and to fit this kind of abutment. So suppose you have an adenturous maxilla and you want to place to do an immediate full arch fixed restoration you would place your implants. It's not so important if there are not so many because you are no longer concerned about micro movement and fracture and so on. Because now you will replace the carrier with the screw retain abutment, tie them to the final level taking advantage of the one abutment, one time concept. And then you place your cylinders, all those abutments, your welding cylinders, your suture, you take a wire, maybe a stronger wire due to the distance between the implant now, two millimeters in diameter, you bend it, you can understand that this is not much work, and then you weld it to the abutment. Then you remove it, do the all the modification, put it back. Now you see a small screw 
for retention because it's a flat to flat connection in this case. Then you rely your shell, your prosthetic shell on the top of this. After that, you trim and finish and polish. And this is the old 12 unit screw retain restoration. And for, for us, this is no longer a temporary restoration, but this is a final or more correctly can be called or addressed as a durable restoration because surgery can last a number of years. And of course the wearing is related to the occlusal material because the framework can last for many and many years. Now you screw retain this into the mouth and the patient can go on in this way upper jaw and the lower jaw we did before. For those who are familiar with the side implant, certainly we know also the transgingival side implant known as side TG. A side TG is like a, a normal side subgingival implant with an MP on the top. So the difference is that of course you don't have micro gap but you have to stay only with this kind of gingival height. So the same cylinder that goes on the MP goes on the XI. So you're using the same abutment. So in case you have an adentulous mandible and you want to make a kind of Toronto bridge, so you place your implant spread in this way, remove the curler. There is no need now to put the MP because this is already included in the implant, put your welding cylinders, see how strong those cylinders are and how bulky. This is very important in order to allow you to do the best welding joint. And this is, of course, giving you the best quality of the framework. And this framework is, can be enriched a little bit. Some retention can be added. And after the modification, you put it back into the mouth and then you're going to have your shell. Now you rely probably no longer with acrylic, it's better to use some kind of composite. And you use some composite like this one. And then after you have captured the framework into the shell, allowing for the setting, uh, trimming, and polish and finish, this is of, of course now uh, ready to be delivered into the mouth. So, you see, it's a classical Toronto bridge, screw retained and is totally passive, fitting into the four implants. After you have screw retained this, you can just close your holes and allow the patient to go. Same thing can be done on the Alkylos implant. And the ankylos, of course, have just one abutment for all the different diameters. That is the so-called uh, narrow balance base abutment. Well, now this is a, a case that is potentially a dentalus. You would put after the extraction and some osteoplastic. You would put your four ankylos implant. Remove the carrier, put the balance base, abutment, choosing the appropriate gingival height, put the cylinder, and again with these cylinders, you now connect the cylinders with the welding wire, and you see that you are flexible. That means that when the implant is a little bit Lingua, you can weld buccally, and when it's really buccally or too much facial, you can weld lingually. But the result is that in a minute, you have created a very stable and permanent framework. And again, on this framework, you rely on your shell, that basically is a kind of denture, or it may even be the existing denture. Now you see you have engaged the framework into the shell, you finish, you open the holes of the screw and now you're ready to put it into the mouth and tie it 
and that's the situation that you can achieve in about half a day. It is some work, but it's very much rewarding for you and for the patient. If you're tied to have your restoration with many holes, you can switch to the chronometric restoration. Everybody knows the synchron approach and let's see how we have adapted our technique to the synchron concept. Many hopelessness have been removed in this case and um, four implants in place, four abutments, synchron are positioned five degrees of chronometry, different angulation, and as you know, we rotate this abutment until we find the parallelism between all the abutments. And this can always be achieved. After all the abutments are found to be parallel, you try the abutment to the final torque, remove the parallelizing tools and put the welding cap. Those welding caps engage the synchron abutment still in chronometry. So you mallet this cap down in order to activate the chronometric fitting and then you test them and you try to remove it with your hands. This will no come out because the chronometric tight is, is very strong. At this point you join all the <coughs> abutment together, possibly welding on the stand and as you can see you have created now a kind of nice framework. The framework has been removed, some blasted, opaque, reinforced replace, always replace and test for passivity. This is always a test you can do. Then you take your shell, now it's a hybrid shell and it's always hollowed. You fill it with some pink composite, gauge the framework, remove it and polish. And now you're ready to put your restoration back into the mouth. You Activate the chronometry with a little hammer, hammering with a little wood stick until this is in place. Then you try with your fingers to remove it and this will always be impossible because the retention is extremely tight. So, if you don't like screw and if you don't want to cement as you shouldn't, this is for sure the best kind of restoration. And this is exactly what we did in this case. The last kind of abutment, but let me tell you my favorite abutment, are the standard abutments, still for the anculars. Or the standard are the narrowest abutment available. Very, very small, like a toothpick. And they are available straight or angled. 15 degree. On the top of this abutment we have developed our specific welding coping that we call in Italian and let's say in universal language antenne. And there are different kind of antenne or welding coping according to the different standard abutment. You know standard A, standard B, different coronal height. So, altogether there is a number of these antennae. And the antenna, this kind of approach, the, the standard abutment approach, is for sure the best for all the partially dentulous cases. Let's see just one case. You have removed some compromised teeth and now you put two implants to make a four unit bridge should be enough. You remove now the surgical screw and put your standard abutment. 
if they are not parallel you will take the angular button then you rotate with a parallelizing device that are available for this technique as for the ankylos same way until they are parallel so now you have two standard abutments that are parallel as you can see here with the parallelizing device in place on the top of these two standard abutments you place your copying and you see this is one copy for the standard A6 in coronal height and on the other you see a copying abutment for the standard B you activate this abutment by hammering this in position and again this abutment should not come out with, with the force of your finger now that you are sure that the abutment are fully set you pick up a wire and you weld and you join the two abutments you add some retention and this is your framework and this framework is, the, is a very good framework that you can rely on this forever. Now, at the end of this, again you see opaquing and uh, shaping the framework. You put it back now in position. You have now your shell. You fill the shell with composite and then you reline it into the mouth. Wait for the setting, remove the old thing, trim and finish, and this is a kind of restoration that you can do. Now you have a four unit bridge with no holes, and the retention is only chronometric, and is so precise. When you put it into the mouth and you hammer this in position, it will never come out unless you're using a crown and bridge remover tool. So, this is very quickly what you can do. Uh, let's say the most, some of the things that you can do with this technique. And of course, the advantage, as you can see, is that this is a chain side approach, it's quick, it's reliable, it's inexpensive. It allows you to place less implant and to load implant that has even a very low primary stability without running any kind of rigs whatsoever. If you want to make more durable restoration, you can also do that, of course, working in abutment level, taking advantage of the one abutment, one time concept. And this is, of course, is another point. <coughs> is this concept evidence-based? Well, many new products and items are launched every, every year on the market and most of them has no science behind them. Well, I've been working on, with my team on this content for many years and we have developed and published a lot of studies, a lot of clinical studies that are available on the more important peer review and um, rated journal of our field. So we have prospective study, retrospective study, randomized study on polyadentulous cases, maxilla, mandible, zygomatic, partially dentulous, even follow up up to six years of the restoration. So we, we do believe that this is an evidence-based concept. Well, coming at the end of this presentation, someone can, in this digital world, could think that I'm more an analogic guy. And under some aspects, I certainly am. But we are not against the digital world. On the contrary, the world one can really be the fulcrum of a lot of digital approaches. You can develop the shell by using a number of cut cam solutions. You can place the in combine uh, the welding approach but with the computer guide surgical approach. 
And once you will replace the temporary restoration, you can replace them with some kind of specifically designed, customized abutment like the Atlantis, or it is, is more complex and uh, you need to make a framework, you can again uh, replace this exhausted restoration with some ISIS uh, framework. So the Wildman concept can really be intertwined with the digital approach and be of mutual support and advantage. We do think that some get armor profession is pretty much in handcrafted profession, where manuality still has some kind of important creativity, uh, fantasy, and we think that this concept is really uh, going in this direction. Thank you very much for your attention.